Good morning, folks. We've got a prime focus today where we go to the sun, weather, electromagnetism at galactic scale, and here at Earth. We'll run down numerous solar climate forcing papers at the end, and we're starting with our star at spaceweathernews.com. We find another day with coronal holes on the south. There are a few bright active regions, but mostly failing to produce any sunspots, and the solar wind is bottoming out. Plasma stream completely calm and in normal range, leaving geomagnetic conditions all quiet as well. When I said mostly failing to produce sunspots, I did mean mostly. We've had eyes on the bright points on the north, but now looking bottom left around the 7 or 8 o'clock position, if you slapped a clock on the sun, those little bright areas incoming indeed have umbral cores beneath them. They are tiny, could decay in minutes and have no penumbral surroundings, but alas, those are high latitude sunspots. Had some questions about the giant things seen on Soho Lasco C3 coronagraph, with this camera built to see the faint light of coronal mass ejections, the brightness of Jupiter's sunlight reflection creates those glare wings out the side. It's the same reason they block out the sun with the central disk. This camera is too sensitive for high light sources. Anyway, let's go ahead here and remind everyone that the Jupiter conjunction with the sun is one of the year's most important planetary geometries. It comes together here towards the end of the week and is statistically correlated with upticks in large seismicity. We're off next to Virginia, where a nearly 70-car pileup on I-64 is being blamed on freezing fog. If you've never experienced freezing fog, it is a different weather animal. The faint moisture rushing into the region while sliding north up the Appalachians and meeting cold air from the north made the conditions ripe for a major accident, and they got one. Heading out next to southern Africa, we have been discussing this for months and they've had no rain in that entire time. Animals struggling to find anything for themselves and their children, many succumbing to a slow passage into the next realm. The people are describing hunger so painful that the fear of it is the only inspiration they have to go out and find food anymore, the only strength they have left, and they are beginning to die. We're looking ahead here in the Philippines. Strong low tightening up and set to maintain its tightness as it charges across the country tonight and through tomorrow. These can gain new life in the South China Sea, so we will come back and check on her in a few days. Let's get to the science news now and we're starting with the Andromeda Galaxy, M31. Our closest galactic neighbor and our most photogenic nearby neighbor, and that's in nearly every wavelength of light. But today, the wavelength of light takes a back seat and instead, it's the polarization of the light near the inner core of the galaxy that's taking focus. The discovered it's definitively still got its ring, its plasma torus from when its cosmic jets were more awake and active. And interestingly, folks, their magnetic field mapping would seem to indicate that it too likely has the large-scale coherent structure and galactic current sheet, just like the Milky Way. And just like the Milky Way, it's interacting with its stars all the time. FYI, this is just the 0.1% of the largest nova events, the only ones we can pick out from, well, a different galaxy. And this makes us wonder about signs in our sky especially when it comes to Earth's catastrophe cycle and the potential for us to take a hit from our galactic current sheet. Are there galactic signs to watch for? What about other stars? How about on the other planets? Yes, we know which ones to look at and no, it's not great news. That video is coming tomorrow night and you should make plans to see it. But right now, we are driving focus back to Earth, even if we are sticking with electromagnetism. As magnetic reconnection continues its place as a key item in space physics, they continue to drive forward with their assumptions, oversimplifications, and their ignoring of Hannes Alfein and Anthony Peratt's work. Their recognition of problems and mysteries in their models can't seem to inspire the thought that maybe they've made a mistake somewhere along the way. But alas, a glimmer of hope comes as well with reconnecting current sheets being exactly how Alfane describes these events in his major work, Cosmic Plasma. It is that circuit disruption that explosively releases the energy of the circuit at the point of disruption, and that is actually the magnetic explosion that they are trying to model and describe with the quote, magnetic reconnection. Now, let's kick off the solar climate forcing with a reminder and an ouch. So, first we must remember that even with Princeton, Harvard, and Yale, Quietly releasing science telling different stories of Earth's climate future, 
Quietly enough to fly mostly under the news radar, it is actually the central organizations that give the cues to the rest of the world. One of those cues was the UN IPCC, allowing solar particle forcing into the mix for the first time, set to be part of the 2022 release. Solar physicists are thrilled, but also surprised like, are you guys sure you want to let him play? He's a lot bigger than CO2. But indeed, it is going to happen. Well, it happened, and now we just wait the long wait for the global report to be complete. Now, not only is the particle forcing data set supposed to enhance and complete the previously used irradiance data sets, but we are learning a bit about how they literally fudge that solar irradiance data. It's not bad enough that for 40 years they have ignored the particles of the sun in favor of the light only, but in many cases they were literally just making it up. The paper describes major errors likely existing in the climate models. And we also saw this week confirmation that space weather and its effect on atmospheric electricity does have a strong effect on cloud microphysics and overall temperature. We're also seeing one of the first great examinations of the slow circulation coupling from the top down due to planetary waves. The simple version of this is that in climate models it's just sunlight heating, slowly fading down through the atmosphere. Turns out it's got a churning action as well. And that takes us to another centralized organization, Breaking Stride. Did you know that the American Geophysical Union just had an enormous solar climate forcing segment at their fall meeting? Yeah, me either. It took place just earlier this month, and they let two of the more cited authors in my own solar climate forcing textbook completely lead the show. Folks, that's not good for human blamers of climate change. There were a large number of presenters and abstracts on the topic, but not one single ounce of media coverage on that science doesn't exactly fit the political control paradigm narrative. But just in case you are interested in the truth, in the silent coup against climate science occurring at universities and major organizations worldwide, if you want the specific mechanisms or what the real future of this planet's temperature is, see Climate Forcing, one of our three major movies from 2019, linked below this video and also found on our channel homepage and suspiciousobservers.org. Folks, we greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind map forecasts and shots of our star to close. And of course, we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here. But right now, it's 4.20 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.